Traveling through life You don't know who you'll meet Traveling through life, you don't know who you'll meet. Entertain a stranger, you don't know who they'll be. It could be an angel right at your feet to bring you good tidings and answer your dreams. It's funny, funny how those we neglect and despise. It's those same people that's our spiritual eyes. If it weren't for their prayers, we would not be here. They have carried our burdens, have uplifted our life. If it weren't for their prayers, we would not be here. They have carried our burdens, have uplifted your life. It's funny, funny how sometimes the people we keep so close. It's those same people that hurt us the most. Jealous hearts and green eyes, their smiles are disguised. They harden our burdens and pull down our life. Jealous hearts and green eyes, their smiles are disguised. They harden our burdens and pull down our life. Traveling through life, you don't know who you'll meet. Entertain a stranger, you don't know who will be. He could be an angel. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. We were actively going to and walking on the moon by 1970. With this spacecraft, the Saturn V. So what, that, that, what, so, sorry, all of us didn't make it to the moon? The fact that there's a rise of flat earthers is evidence of two things. Okay. One. One. We live in a country that protects free speech. That's actually kind of awesome. And two. Uh huh. We live in a country with a failed educational system. Ooh, that one hurt. The world's not flat. This is fair. The world's not a sphere. It is flat. The world's not flat. This is fair. The world's not a sphere. It is flat. The world's not flat. This is fair. The world's not a sphere, it is flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it is Renaissance, rebirth, and the last. Copernicus went Helio on the maps. Map Jesuits put the sun in the center. Cosmic dissonance now we're trapped. Trapped in a mind so estranged from the past. Thinking that the world was a blast. A big bang. Then we evolved, evolved. Just spinning around on the globe. The globe. Chaos of our door. Law from this order. order. But I know the most high is an order. order. And he knocks at the world has extremities. Isaiah yeah. said the world is like a tent. Yeah. And we dwell in it. Yeah. Concealed with the Father on top of it. Yeah. And that's what we found in the Word. The word. Which is known as the Holy Ring. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. It's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it is flat. flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. sphere. The world's not a sphere, it is flat. flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. sphere. The world's not a sphere, it is flat. flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. sphere. The world's not a sphere, it is flat. The world is not flat, not flat. I thought you were smart. Top cap, top cap. NASA showed us the glow from space, bro. Hey, bro. Us Aldrin walked on the moon, yo. Moon. Apollo 11 um, to 17, 11. and Neil Armstrong, so stop trying to mislead. Mm. And the Earth is a billion years old. Oh. I watched this on the TV a week ago, <sighs> and we evolved from cosmic soup, yo. The yo. world is so, so spherical. It's a miracle. miracle. I don't think you understand basic quantum physics principles. No flat. Earth. Of course there's a curve, but um, it's invisible You have to be in space to see the principle You have to be in space to see the principle Chuck it Uh.
eyes and experience tell us the earth is flat and motionless and everything in the sky revolves around us. But when we cease to believe our own eyes and experience, we have to prostrate ourselves at the feet of these very pseudo-scientists who are blinding us, treat them as experts, astronomical priests who have special knowledge only they can access, like the Hubble telescope. So by brainwashing us of something so gigantic and fundamental, it actually makes every other kind of lesser indoctrination a piece of cake. Earth being the flat, fixed center of the universe around which everything in the heavens revolves gives a special importance and significance not only to Earth, but to us humans, the most intelligent among the intelligent designer's designs. By turning Earth into a spinning ball thrown around the sun and shot through infinite space from a godless Big Bang, they turn humanity into a random, meaningless, purposeless accident of a blind, dumb universe. So it's like trauma-based mind control beating the divinity out of us with their mental manipulation. It's actually the, the biblical cosmology is a geocentric cosmology. Then I realize why they're hiding the truth. It's because they don't want anyone to know anything. They want people dumb, blind, deaf to the truth, deaf to the truth, deaf to the truth. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. All praises and glory to the Most High. Today we're going to be looking at exploring the heaven. Exploring the heaven. So... Before we start, I just want to shout out the moderators. Um, let me know if everything's going or if you can hear what we're saying, what I'm saying uh, correctly. There's no lag, delay, stuff like that. Okay, hopefully that's working on my side. Shout out Awaken Now, Rachel S, um, Arena, or oh, Ariana. Okay, we're good to go. Drama Queen. All right, that's good. That's good. We're good to go. So, <laughs> already got somebody in here saying, on some trolling thing, you know. If if you um if that's your opinion, you might as well leave already. You know, I'm not even trying to um to you know convince people. It's too late in the day. <laughs> I'm not convincing people. It's too late in the day for that. You might as well just excuse yourself. We can put you can you know still chill. It's up to you. All right. So exploring the heaven. We're going to get into this one very swiftly, just making sure everything's set up on my end and there's no lagging. I keep getting all these bad messages popping up from the tube saying that the, the signal is a bit bad. All right, then, you know what? I'm just going to go with it anyway. Let's go. Okay, so do me a favor, get your, 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 your sword ready. Because we're going to be in the sword today, as per usual. Let's have your sword on standby. Shout out, set apart, Judia songs. You know what we're going to do? I'm just going to chuck out the trolls from the from the get go. Not even gonna be nice. <laughs> Being nice is over. You know, too many people come with these nicey, nicey kind of approaches. Just you know, chuck them out. It is what it is. They can still listen, but they just can't be a part of the situation. All right, cool. Good on my end. I think it's good on your end. So, all right, let's let's kickstart this. So we're looking at exploring the heaven. It's not Van Allen Belt, but the firmament. So, what was made the second day? 
And you know what I'm gonna do? Oh man. <laughs> what was made the second day? I'm just gonna throw it out there for you guys first of all. What was made the second day? Anybody guess what was made the second day? What was made the second day? All right. When you know the answer, just put the answer in the box. Comment away. Feel free to use the keyboard. Feel free to use your keyboard. Feel free for a bit of interaction and engagement. Shout out set apart. <laughs> yeah, I saw the message. I knew that you, you meant to say shout out instead of um the expletive. <laughs> I don't usually look at the comments the comment section, but that was actually quite hilarious. Um all right. So what was created on the second day, guys? Come on, come on, come on. It's not that hard. Get the swords out, man. Half the time people get I, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to engage with people to, to get them to answer their own questions and to answer questions themselves confidently, you know. What was created on the second day? According to the scripts. <laughs> Don't worry, you can cheat, man. You can look, look. <laughs> Just look, man. Uh, all right, some people have put some answers in. Some people have put some answers in. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All oh, glory and praises to the Most High. Shout out everybody who has been re redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You know? All right. Safe. So everyone's saying certain things. Some have said light. Some have said sky and water. I can see where people are going with sky and water. Uh, some people have said, um, some people have said sun, moon, and stars. Some people have said light. Some people have said firmament. Some people have said water. So everyone's saying a lot of different things, you know. No, nope, you know, some people are saying the same. Some people are saying things that are not the same. So that's interesting. All right, cool. That's it. Just wanted to pick the brain a little bit to engage people. Uh, to have a bit of interaction. Okay, okay. So let's just give that answer real swiftly. And Yahuwah said, but I don't want to offend other people. Yahweh said, but I don't want to offend other people. So I'll say, Ahaya said. <laughs> I try to cater for everybody. I know a lot of people get triggered over little um, things that they're in indoctrinated um, to have no common sense. So let's just go with Genesis 1 verse 6 and it says, And Yahuwah said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Ahia made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so stop what was made the second day we're gonna get to it what was called heaven we're gonna answer it and Yahuwah called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. So what was made on the second day? The firmament. And what was the firmament called? Heaven. Interesting.
Let's continue, let's advance. So we've just answered those two questions, the firmament, but what is the firmament? What does it mean? Hopefully, we're going to be circling around the theme of the firmament today. So we're going to be unpacking, unwrapping, unraveling the firmament. What was made the second day, the firmament? What was the process of the firmament? Let, the, let there be a firmament in the middle of the waters or the mist of the waters and let it divide, so there's some maths, the waters from waters. So divide water from water, separate water from water. Okay. And Yahuwah made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament. So there was waters under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament and it was so. So you have water above and water beneath. Why is he saying this? Because half the time these verses go over our heads. We don't really process the verses because we've been introduced from our infancy from our embryonic years to all manner of lies. So then when presented with truth, it's difficult. There's cognitive dissonance, there's resistance, which rightfully so, because it's going against the grain. So the second day, waters were divided from waters, waters that were outside or above the firmament, separated from water that was under the firmament. And we just realized that the firmament was called heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. Let's continue. Let's advance. One went where and one remained where. One went where and one remained where. Ezra's or 2nd Ezra 641 upon the second day thou madest the spirit of the firmament and commandest it to part asunder and to make a division between or betwixt the waters that one part might go up and the other remain beneath one will go up and one will go beneath. So you know when you look up to the sky, <laughs> you're looking up to water. Uh, it's probably too early for that one. And you know when you look down to see the water, the sea, the ocean, you're looking at water, right? That's called the face of the waters. And then you know underneath the waters, there's the underworld, or as they say, the underwater. Or they say the abyss. But too early. Those who know and have been a part of the studies and seen, they already know what time it is. Those who are just, you know, curious to see what the study is about, we're going to uh, unpack it by the most High's grace. So, what does this say? Upon the second day, so as a, there's our second witness to the Genesis account, and it's saying there was an asunder or a part asunder which is a split or a divide, as it says, to make a division between or betwixt the waters. That one part might go up and the other remain beneath. Interesting. So one went where and one remained where? One went up and one remained beneath or under the firmament. Okay. Springs are found where? Springs are found where? Second Ezra 4 verse 7. And he said unto me, if I should ask thee, 
how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea. This is deep, you know. <laughs> I don't even think people understand how deep this verse is. This verse is deep. Anyway, and he said unto me, If I should ask thee how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea, <sighs> deep, or how many springs are in the beginning of the deep, or how many springs are above the firmament, or which are the outgoings of paradise. This verse is massive. Not enough time to just break down. Actually, is there? No. <laughs> we'll come back to it uh, by the Most High's grace. Um, most High willing. So it says, And he said unto me, If I should ask thee, so it's a rhetorical question, like what you see in the book of Job, um, how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea. Dwellings, you know. <laughs> Tabern uh, to allow it. Or how many springs are in the beginning of the deep? Or how many springs are above the firmament. So springs are found where? Above the firmament? Springs. I thought springs were found beneath. Like, you know. I didn't know it was found above. Alright, so what does the word firmament mean? Well, according to the Strong's Concordance, it means rakia or rokia. And properly... An expanse, that is, the firmament, or, apparently, a visible arc of the sky. A visible arc of the sky. So above the a visible arc of the sky, oh, you know what? I was supposed to put so many, you know. I'm disappointed if I haven't put it in. I don't think I have. Let me find it real quick. Alright, so I've managed to, to find it. So, check out these lyrics. Uh, I'll just say it to you now. And as we go through, you're going to see... You're going to see that... Oh, man. <laughs> I'll just read it first. So, uh, this is from the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. I'm going to be breaking down this whole film by the most High's grace because there's so much in it that is... Um, you can apply and look into on a contemporary uh, basis. So the lyrics to this song say, don't watch the singing. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard once in a lullaby. Pause. Somewhere over the rainbow, over the firmament, over the ark, way up high, there's a land that I heard once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue. Blue? Interesting. Um, then let's read on a little bit more. Actually, no, I don't really read anymore. <laughs> but yeah, somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I once heard in a lullaby. Don't worry, it'll make sense as we go through. Somewhere way up high. And he said unto me, If I should ask thee, How great dwellings are in the midst of the sea? Or how many springs are in the beginning of the deep? Or how many springs are above the firmament? 
or which are the outgoings of paradise? So to answer that question, springs are found where? Above the firmament. And we know springs are also found beneath the firmament. But just to answer that question, you know, because it says springs are in the beginning of the deep. Where's the deep? Under the firmament. And that was it say? Or how many springs are above the firmament? So Darius gave you um, a contrast. The springs in the deep, which is below, and the springs that are above, which is over the firmament. Interesting. Let's continue. Let's advance. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. So, what is the pride of height? What is the pride of height? Let's go to Sirach or Ecclesiastes 43 verse 1. The pride of height. Remember, somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. The pride of height is the clear firmament, the beauty of heaven with his glorious shoe. Or show. Walt Disney, a 33 degree uh, Freemason, in all of his films, in the opening introduction, you have this castle, and behind the castle is a bow or an arch. And the funny thing is, when you zoom in on this image, um, it's a castle way up high. It's in the clouds, <laughs> if you think about it. It's always in the clouds. And the bow, if I had my arrow, um, the bow is just underneath the tower. So outside of the tower, or outside of the, the firmament, or outside of the bow, or outside of the ark, you can see a tower way up high, outside of the firmament, and also inside the firmament. And all these films is showing you the ark or the firmament or the bow and outside of the firmament he's showing you a tower interesting but hey we're just scratching the surface all praises to the most high let's continue um let's advance so what is the pride of height? What is the pride of height? When you think of something that's prideful, what's the pride of height? The pride of height is the clear firmament. The clear firmament? Yeah, the clear firmament. The beauty of heaven with his glorious shoe. And you know when they throw rockets up, I mean, oh, rockets go very high in the sky, you know? But most of the times when these rockets go high in the sky, they always hit something or meet something and bend they meet something that doesn't cause them to explode on impact but actually causes them to curve and creates curvature in the sky but we'll get there okay so the moon resides in or outside the firmament and also why do we call the moon the moon or why do we call month month why is the month called month? And does the moon reside in or outside the firmament? Let's answer that again, or let's say that again. Does the moon, you know, lunar, reside in or outside the firmament? So, Sirach 43, 7 and 8. From the moon is the sign of the feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. The month is called after her name. So why do we say month? Where does the origin of month come from? The etymology of the word month. The month comes from the name moon. This is why women have a monthly cycle, a moon cycle, a lunar cycle. A lot of 
things take place in the occult when it relates to the moon. A lot of things take place when it came to Yasharal, when it came to the moon. Um, you know, we would a lot of feasts and celebrations took place in Yasharal, which generally had a sacrifice in the occult and in um, the dark arts. They have sacrifices of women, especially virgins, um, to, to do blood sacrifices from, I don't want to get too deep in other nastiness, but, you know, from the, the, they call it the ambrosia, which is the blood full of life and platelets and whatnot. And they, they like to sacrifice certain people on certain uh, full moons, monthlies. I won't get into too much of that though. That's not the time or the place, but anyway, let's continue. Um, let's advance. So, the moon resides in or outside the firmament. We have an answer that's so let's go. The month is called after her name, the moon, increasing wonderfully in her changing. You know, because sometimes the moon is waning, then it's waxing, then it's a full moon, waning. Um, waxing and a full moon. The moon, the month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above. So the moon is an instrument of the army above, shining outside the firmament of heaven. No, it doesn't say outside. Shining in the firmament of heaven. Interesting. Okay. So where do we see the moon? It's underneath Rakia or the firmament. It's not outside of the firmament. It's inside the firmament. According to Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus. I'll just let you look at that uh, image so you can see. Um, you know, visually, one thing to hear it, but to see it makes it make more sense. So you see the moon, the stars and the sun operate inside the firmament. I know it might be hard to, I know it's going to be hard to let go of your academia and your education or your um, accolades and whatever you may have, titles and, you know, who you might be some top don guard on. And now hearing that, you know, the scriptures are saying the opposite to your education might be upsetting, disturbing, uh, make you feel uneasy, uncomfortable, angry. Vex, <laughs> cantankerous, belligerent, you know, but truth is a truth. Let's continue. Let's advance. Okay. Now, according to Uncle David here, yeah, what did he say regarding... What did he tell us to look at and just be like, wow, the Most High is amazing? You know, what did he say to look at and just be like, wow, the Most High is amazing? Yeah. And the birds fly. Do they fly in or outside the firmament? And what shows, what shows of his handiwork? Or should I put what shows off? That might sound better. What shows off his handiwork? So, let's answer the first question first in order. Birds fly in or outside the firmament? Well, I guess we can kind of guess using common sense, but let's just use the scriptures. So, we know if the, well, if the moon resides inside the firmament, then surely the birds will reside inside the firmament. That's just me using common sense. But let's see if the scriptures go with common sense or they're outside of common sense. Genesis 1 verse 20. And Yahuwah said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life and fowl. Did you realize that the fowl was made in the water, right? Oftentimes you think that 
It's just the aquatic life that was made in the water. But the fowl was also made in the water too. And Ahaya, or Yahuwah, or Yahawah, to cater to, for everybody who's triggered by um, the different, the different um, interpretations of name. And Yahuwah said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So the, the birds or the fowl, they fly in the open firmament of heaven. They fly inside this vast open area inside the firmament. So the moon's in the firmament, the birds in the firmament, the sun's in the firmament, everything that inside the firmament, you see me? Alright, that was a very poor Jamaican accent. I know I know Jules B is gonna come with some digger digger thing. <laughs> but yeah, alright, let's continue. Yo, the mosquito is going on golly, you know. Oh gosh. Tried to kill it, but I think it killed me. Alright, so Okay, now let's continue even more. So, according to Uncle David, he said to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the heavens declare the glory of Yah and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. So what shows us his handiwork, his handiwork, his handwork is the firmament. And another scripture that I wanted to throw in here, but I couldn't find the, the, the actual image that I made to complement it, is when it says that the Most High's hand bends the rainbow. And I was going to link that to handiwork, handiwork, hand bending the bow. I was like, wow. Once you just know and let go of what you think you know and go by the Most High Spirit, it just opens you up to more truth. And you're thinking, wow, there's more truth to what I thought I knew yesterday. <laughs> and the most I just takes you on a journey, all praises. So David is redirecting us or saying to us, yo, the firmament shows us his handiwork, you know. The firmament, the firmament, you know, rakia, the arch or the ark shows us his handiwork. What does Uncle Job say regarding this handiwork? The sky is described as what? How is the sky described according to Uncle Job? So according to Job, it says the sky is described as, let's answer this, has thou, again with these rhetorical questions, you know, <laughs> has thou with him spread out the sky? So we know that Job worked with the most high spreading out the sky. <laughs> but I love the rhetoricalness, you know. This people people think yeah that the most high hasn't got character, you know. Even I don't know if this is the three friends that are asking or if it's the most high. But even when the Most High talks to Job, you know, the Most High has, it seems like he has a sense of humor, you know. I mean, he made us from the dust of the earth, yeah. You know, the first layer of the crust of the earth or the dust of the earth is called humus or hummus. That's where you get hummus from. And then we were called human, hummus. The, the dirt, the, you know, the first layer of dirt is red or black and they call it hummus or brown, and they call it hummus, and then we are called human. Hu means color, color man. So anyway, rant over. The Most High, he's, he, he's like he's got, a, he has a sense of humor. Uh, the Prophet Elijah, he had a sense of humor. Uh, the Apostle Paul had a sense of humor. Uh, James had a sense of humor. Yeah, don't let people take away your character and stuff like that, unless you're on folly, then the key. 
All right, so let's answer this question. The sky is described as what? So Joel 37 verse 18. Has thou with him spread the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass? So what does looking glass mean? So when I looked up the word glass, it said ice, or as if bold, that is smooth, hence hail, by resemblance, rock, crystal, crystal, frost, ice. So, the sky is described as what? Has thou with him spread the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? And then we looked up glass, and glass is as ice, as if bold, that is smooth, hence hail, by resemblance, rock crystal, crystal, frost, ice. Interesting. So, the firmament is described as glass what is glass? It's transparent, it's translucent, and it can be quite tough. You can even have bulletproof glass. You know, you can take a shotgun to some glass and it won't penetrate, it's um, impenetrable, you know. So glass can be tough, but glass ultimately is transparent, you can see through, you know. Interesting. Revelation 4 verse 6. What is the glass described as in this verse? So what is the glass described as in this particular verse? And before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So, what was this sea of glass or a sea of glass likened unto? What was it like? What was it comparable to? What was it um, familiar to? So again, it says, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. So the sea of glass like unto crystal, could this be describing the firmament? Or is this a stretch at this point? Might be a stretch at this point. But well, hopefully as we go through, we see it's not a stretch. <laughs> All praises. But anyway, let's just backpedal. So glass, what did it liken the glass to? It said what? Rock. Crystal. What is this saying in Revelation 4 verse 6? And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. Here's a little video and I'll get back to you. Glass ceiling. <laughs> so I guess I'm up against the highest, hardest stained glass ceiling. But we are all standing under a glass ceiling right now. Yeah. It was fine for all this talk about me running to break the big, hard glass ceiling. And Although we weren't able to shatter that highest, hardest glass ceiling this time, thanks to you, it's got about 18 million cracks in it. is shining through like never before. There's a mystery. Scattered around in the sand are thousands of chunks of strange yellow-green glass. 
It is really, really a mysterious class. We scientists are still kind of puzzled how these things form. And I can't believe we just put the biggest crack in that glass ceiling yet. It's got about 18 million cracks in it. The Latin Dominicus, which means of the Lord. So, yeah, man. Let me just move back this. We're going to get to Dominicus, um, Golgita, Golgetta. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Definitely. So, anyway. Looking glass. Hillary Clinton's talking about how she's, there's a glass ceiling. You know what? It's funny, you know, because certain things that get said um, as proverbials or as mores or as little captions, you know, people say, you know, if you're going for a particular job in an organization, they'll say, oh, well, be careful. You don't want to hit the glass ceiling or, you know, that job is inaccessible to people who look like us, who talk like us, who walk like us, who have a certain sex or a certain height or a certain weight and they say nah man it's a glass ceiling you can't get past this glass ceiling I wonder where they got that glass ceiling metaphor from when you start connecting the dots then you have Hillary Clinton just talking about mashing up the glass mashing up the glass and people are thinking that she's talking about um, career progression you know or, or winning the election or something crazy like that. But stands to reason she's talking about something else. But I don't want to trigger people at this point. So let's continue and uh, let's advance. But notice in the last video, or one of the videos inside that video, it was talking about how they found strange crystal stone in the desert in certain places sporadically. And it's unaccounted for. It's just random. Okay, firmament was likened to what? In Ezekiel 1 verse 22. So in Ezekiel 1 verse 22. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over the heads above. So the firmament, again, is likened onto the color of crystal. Now, I just got a crystal definition below. Crystal color crystals occur in range of colors from colorless to having multi-hued shades like a rainbow. The color of crystals has long fascinated and drawn humans to them. There is a crystal for every color in the rainbow and beyond, it seems. Now, in London, there's a place called Crystal Palace. And in Crystal Palace, it has a dome-like structure. And we know glass is transparent, so you can see through the glass. And it's called the Crystal Dome. Interesting. Dome firmament firmament dome in fact in some i think it's the nlt version when it's when it references firmament in genesis it actually calls it a dome um before i go any further is the connection working correctly because I, I can see a few uh messages popping up on my screen uh, just let me know if it's working. I'll just put a one in the box. Uh, hopefully it's not lagging. I don't really want to do this um, a second time. I think there's a little bit of a delay as well, you know. Probably about 20 second delay. Let me know if, you, if everything's working accordingly. Just put a little one in the box.
All right, nice one, nice one. So it's working, it's working, it's working. All praises, all glory to the most high. Let's continue and let's advance. So according to Ezekiel, the firmament was uh, likened onto the color of crystal. Now crystal can be colorless or it can encapsulate a plethora of colors. And then you have structures in London called the Crystal Palace. And the Crystal Palace is a translucent um, building full of glass with a arch or with a dome, like a greenhouse effect. And actually it has trees inside it, like a garden. Um, so, interesting. All right. So, heaven stretched to dwell in or out. Now, we know the word heaven um, could be interchangeable for firmament because we saw earlier when you go to this text, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And we looked at what firmament means or what heaven meant and there's your definition, visible arc of the sky. And we saw here, and Yahuwah called the firmament heaven. The firmament was called heaven according to Genesis 1 verse 8. So let's just go to this scripture now. The heavens or the firmament were stretched to dwell in or dwell out. Do humans dwell outside the firmament or inside the firmament? It is he, the Most High, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants, you and I, therefore are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. So we dwell inside the firmament. We don't dwell outside the firmament. The moon's in the firmament. The birds are in the firmament. You and I, hopefully, <laughs> are inside the firmament. And above the firmament, outside the firmament, the Most High sits on the circle of the earth. Ezekiel 126. And above the firmament, that was over their heads, was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. So he was above, but yet he was on it or upon it, seated on it, upon it. You get it. So that's two witnesses talking about a throne above the firmament, on the firmament. Heaven stretched out to dwell in or out to dwell in. Above the firmament is what? The likeness of a throne and the likeness and the appearance of a man above and upon it. Interesting. Let's continue, let's advance. So, this was what triggered this study today for me. I was looking at the scripture that um, I have in Ezra's. Yeah, I was looking at this one. And as I was saying, huh? So I was looking at the scripture in Ezra's. The typical one, it says, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And, you know, people generally end there to say, yeah, man, Esau's the end of the world and Jacob's the beginning. <laughs> people usually, you know, start with that and do their thing. Um, but what intrigued me was the, the latter part. And it says, and when the world that shall begin, so it's going to begin a process to vanish away, shall be finished, then will I show these tokens the books shall be opened before the firmament and they shall see all 
together. Interesting. So the book shall be open before the, fir the firmament, and they shall all see together. So that's either indicating that the books are going to be opened, and we're all going to see the history of the books together, or it's indicating that the book shall be opened, and the firmament's going to be opened, and we're all going to see the firmament open together. So it could either mean the books are going to be opened, and we're going to see the history of the books on the firmament, like some smart glass, some smart TV. Everybody's seen the history of Adam to Revelation, you know. Or it's talking about the book shall be opened before the firmament. So the firmament's going to be opened and everyone's going to see. And then the books are opened and we all get to see, you know, work one in the books. But either, either way, I found that interesting and that kind of led me to just do a quick study today. And um, interestingly, they have switchable smart glass with, inter with interactive frames. When you realize that the, the dome is, is, is glass, but it's not your typical glass that you can just break because we've seen rockets go up to it and arch, meaning that it's, 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 it's not how we would perceive glass to be because we just see glasses. You drop a glass on the floor, floor it cracks um, into pieces but interesting nevertheless and when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished then will I show these tokens the books shall be opened before the firmament and they shall see all together so we're all going to see either all the books together or we're going to see the firmament opening together And I've just shown you how that the smart glass and dome in and of itself is smart glass. <laughs> so the Most High has a big plasma TV in the sky on the dome. You know, like when some people go to the cinema back in the day, uh, back in the 70s. Um, was it, you know, the, the, the funds generation, uh, the 70 show generation. And they would go to uh, a car park and they would watch films on a projector screen. Well, put it like this, the Most High has a universal, this is probably where they got Universal Studios from, you know, Universal Studios. The Most High has his own universal or, you know, uh, multi-regional plasma screen in the sky <laughs> and one day he's going to open the books and show us all at the same time simultaneously Wagwan or it just means that you know like I said before he's going to the firmament's going to um, be taken back and we're all going to see what what takes place you get me but interesting nevertheless interesting nevertheless Alright, so in Uncle Daniel's account, he said, And they that be wise, so he's talking to a particular group, not everybody. He's not talking to every Yehudim, he's not talking to every Gen. He's saying, talking to a particular group, they that be wise, yeah, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness, a.k.a. right living as the stars forever and ever hold up there's brightness on the firmament yeah oh okay what's the brightness why well, they call it van allen belt but to you and i it's just the firmament or they call it um what do they call it northern lights and stuff like that these are traces of the firmament some parts of the firmament are lower than others, hence why it has an arc or an arch. Some parts of the firmament are lower, and obviously some parts of the firmament are higher, hence why we saw earlier, what does it say? The pride of height. The pride of height is the clear firmament, the beauty of heaven with his glorious shoe. And we saw how Disney knows about this, and this is why they have the bow for the dome, the ark 
outside of the arc. Just outside of the arc, you can see. Do apologize for not having the arrow, but you see the arc. Just outside of the arc, the, pres the precipice of the arc, you can see a tower. So there you know, somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, <laughs> is a land. According to, uh, what's her name? Wizard of Oz. Or Oz. Alright, so, done that, done that. So Dan Daniel's alluding to the brightness of the firmament. Alright, here's a little short video because I know a lot of people are triggered. They're saying, how dare he speak against NASA? This guy's an idiot. I mean, the sun is circle, the moon is circle, or, or spherical, or whatever you want to call it. And so the earth needs to be the same. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, how come he's going against science? And how come he's going against, um, you know, Copernicus and all our great fathers of science and astrology and astronomy? And what? who does he think he is? This little, you know, going against all my uh, teaching, you know? We can go into the... We can go into space. We've been to the moon. We've been to Mars. What's he talking about? All right, calm down. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. And unlike the previous program, we are setting a course with specific and achievable milestones. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit, beyond low Earth orbit, beyond low Earth orbit. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on Space Station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. So we have a really robust exploration program at NASA. The plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is that is much bigger than what we have today, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to via, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go, and this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to, and we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. The moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to. The moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to. The moon, the moon, the moon. Yeah, man, somebody hit the ball on the head. I didn't want to say, because I just wanted to see if someone would get it themselves and all glory to the most high, somebody got it. So, somebody said, you know the tower and the firmament, is that the Tower of Babel? Yeah, absolutely the Tower of Babel. They tried to build a tower to get to where? Heaven, to do what? Make a name and to, you know, stop the most high from doing a flood again or, you know, have some collateral just in case the most high tried to flood the world again. And then that's where you can see the tower outside of the firmament. Their ambition is to build a tower outside of the firmament to get outside of this firmament. <laughs> to, to crack the glass ceiling, to get outside of the glass ceiling. Because the earth is under some kind of quarantine at the moment. And um, these people are trying to escape. All right, I'm going to finish off now anyway. This is the last one. Appreciate it's kind of late where people are. Um, it's kind of early <laughs> where people are too. So it's the best of both. Um, okay, so what was set up and will be, what, what was set up 
and will be ended by that's probably not a, a good question but anyway who sets up things and who will end things who sets up things and who will ultimately end things let's find out and he said unto me in the beginning when the earth was made before the borders of the world stood or e or ever the winds blew before it thundered and lightened or ever foundations of paradise were laid before the fair flowers were seen or ever the movable powers were established before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together or ever the height of the air were lifted up before the measures of the firmament were named or ever the chimney in Zion were hot so notice there's always a reference to the firmament before the measures of the firmament were named the measures of the firmament and ere the present years were sought out and or ever the inventions of them that now sin were turned before they were sealed that have gathered faith for a treasure then did I consider these things and they all were made through me alone and through none other by me also they shall be ended and by none other so let me read that last part again then did I consider these things that they all were made through me alone and through none other by me also they shall be ended and by none other this is why when you look at the statue in Daniel chapter 2 um, Daniel chapter 2 yeah Daniel chapter 2 um, the statue what ultimately destroys the statue the most I put all these different nations in power for a time and for a season generally to chastise his people for um, going astray yeah and not only that but every dog has its day but ultimately the most I put certain nations in places but then who's going to destroy the statue the stone is going to lick the statue. So when it says here, and they were all made through me alone and through none other, by me also shall they be ended and by none other. So at the moment, you have a, you, well, back in the day, you had an operation called uh, Dominicus, Operation Dominic, Operation Dominic on Christmas Island, Operation Dominic. Christmas Island and if you look at the emblem of Operation Dominic it's a nuke that they were trying to fire into the firmament unsuccessfully a nuke that they were trying to fire into the firmament unsuccessfully 1964 and then you had another nuke that they tried to fire in 1960 actually was that 1962 I think these dates might be a bit off, you know. Oh, I think Fishbowl might have been first, and okay. Either, either, even if the dates are a bit off. You had Fishbowl, and you had Operation Dominic. Now, Dominic is translated as of the Lord. And Fishbowl, of the Lord. Why is it a Fishbowl? Because we realise that the firmament is an arc. It's a transparent glass ceiling that we dwell inside. The moon dwells inside. The birds dwell inside. We are in a, a, a encased system. No one can break out and go into deep space. There is no such thing as deep space in that context because we're all confined inside a a a, a heaven, a firmament. Yeah, and that's about it. And the world powers have been trying to destroy and break through this firmament unsuccessfully. So Operation Dominic or, Domin or Dominicus is of the Lord. And Operation Fish Bowl, they were trying to break out of the transparent bowl that were inside. So they kind of tell you in their own subtle way what they're doing. 
Um, but more recently than that, you have a guy called Bill Gates. Many people are probably not aware of who Bill Gates is or probably never even heard the name Bill Gates. <laughs> Uh, but Bill Gates, he wants to cover the sun to help counter uh, global warming or something like that. So you can't cover the sun with a finger, but maybe with science and technology. So that's what he wants to do. He wants to use science and technology to blot out the sun. I wonder why. Uh, Sweden, I don't know if this is a publicity stunt or genuine but Sweden axes Bill Gates' funded Harvard experiment. Sweden's space agency has called off a geoengineering experiment to determine whether blotting out the sun with aerosolis could reverse global warming. Funded by Bill Gates, the project stoked fierce opposition from eco groups. Notice these guys want to try to end the world themselves, or they're saying, I don't want to serve the Most High. So I'd rather destroy everything that is uh, valuable to him. I ain't going out without a fight. But guess what? Second Ezra 6 verse 6 says, Then did I consider these things. They were all made through me alone and, f and through none other. By me also shall they be ended and by none other. So the most I saying, I created this world. I created things and I will end things. No one can end things before me. And no one create better than me. He's going to be the ultimate creator and the ultimate ender. And he's going to lick the statue and break it in two, three, four, five when he's ready. Bill Gates can't rush it. Dominic Dominicus can't rush it. Fishbowl can't rush it. The Mosai will do what he's going to do when he's going to do it. So, I'm going to bring this to a swift conclusion at this point. I hope that all that's made sense. Might not have made sense to some. Might have made a lot of sense to others. So, I hope you found all of this interesting. And as always, provoking thought. I'm going to be uploading a video that is going to be very controversial on purpose. Not to entertain people like a circus but literally to make people think and it's more of an in-house video aimed at um, the scattered brethren of the diaspora Caribbean the Americas all over the gaff England um, it's a video showing us not in a good light as an attempt for us to do better you know individually uh, and just you know in every every aspect hopefully lead people to humility and a bit of rep and not a bit repentance you know because um, there's things that are taking place on the continent that's just ridiculous evil wicked things that are taking place in america from our own people evil wicked um, and there's things that are taking place in the uk that are evil and wicked but this video is going to be more centered on us, the scattered Yehudim, the house of Yasharel. It's more aimed at us. So uh, it's already uploaded. I'm going to have it premiering uh, tomorrow by the Most High's Grace, probably in the evening. So just look out for that one. Uh, I'll probably call it cleaning the house or house cleaning or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to roll out. I hope you found all this interesting, people. All praises and glory to the Most High Yah. Thank you for the Son that was sent for our sins. And as always, people, provoke him for. Traveling through life, you don't know who you'll meet Entertain a stranger, you don't know who they'll be It could be an angel right at your feet
to bring you good tidings and answer your dreams It's funny, funny how those we neglect and despise It's those same people that's our spiritual eyes If it weren't for their prayers, we would not be here They have carried our burdens, have uplift our life If it weren't for their prayers, we would not be here They have carried our burdens, have uplift your life it's funny, funny how sometimes the people we keep so close It's those same people that hurt us the most Jealous hearts and green eyes, their smiles are disguised They harden our burdens and pull down our life Jealous hearts and green eyes, their smiles are disguised They harden our burdens and pull down our life Travelling through life, you don't know who I'm Entertain a stranger, you don't know who the win He could be an angel Now one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. We were actively going to and walking on the moon by 1970. With this spacecraft, the Saturn V, so what, that, that, what, so, sorry, all of this didn't make it to the moon? The fact that there's a rise of flat earthers is evidence of two things. Okay, one. One, we live in a country that protects free speech. That's actually kind of awesome. And two, uh -huh. we live in a country with a failed educational system. Ooh, that one hurt. <laughs> The world's not flat, it's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it's flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it's flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it's flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it's Renaissance, rebirth, and alas. Copernicus went helio on the maps Map Jesuits put the sun in the centre Cosmic dissonance now we're trapped In a mind so estranged from the past Thinking that the world was a blast A big bang Then we evolved Just spinning around on the globe Chaos of our dough Law from this order But I know the most high is an order And he knocks at the world Extremities, eyes, eyes, said the world is like a tent, and we dwell in it, concealed with the Father on top of it, and that's what we found in the Word, the Word, which is known as the Holy Ring. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it is flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it is flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it's flat, flat. The world's not flat, it's a sphere. The world's not a sphere, it is flat. The world is not flat, not flat. I thought you were smart, top cat, top. NASA showed us the globe from space, bro. I was Aldrin walked on the moon, yo. Apollo 11, um, to 17. And Leo Armstrong, so stop trying to mislead. And the Earth is a billion years old. I watched this on the TV a week ago And we evolved from cosmic soup, yo The yo. world is so, so spherical It's a miracle I don't think you understand basic quantum physics principles No flat earth, of course there's a curve But, um, it's invisible You have to be in space to see the principle You have to be in space to see the principle Chuck it Flat like a Our eyes and experience tell us the earth is flat and motionless and everything in the sky revolves around us. But when we cease to believe our own eyes and experience, we have to prostrate ourselves at the feet of these very pseudo-scientists who are blinding us, treat them as experts, astronomical priests who have special knowledge only they can access, like the Hubble telescope. So 
by brainwashing us of something so gigantic and fundamental, it actually makes every other kind of lesser indoctrination a piece of cake. Earth being the flat, fixed center of the universe around which everything in the heavens revolves gives a special importance and significance not only to Earth, but to us humans, the most intelligent among the intelligent designers' designs. By turning Earth into a spinning ball thrown around the sun and shot through infinite space from a godless Big Bang, they turn humanity into a random, meaningless, purposeless accident of a blind, dumb universe. So it's like trauma-based mind control beating the divinity out of us with their mental manipulation. It's actually the, the biblical cosmology is a geocentric cosmology. Then I realized why they're hiding the truth. It's because they don't want anyone to know anything. They want people dumb, blind, deaf to the truth, deaf to the truth, deaf to the truth.